Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, January 20, 2024. I pray that this Sabbath morning will be a blessing for you. I pray that the Lord will pour out His blessing upon you and your families as you seek His face today. Our reading today comes to us from James chapter 1, reading verse 12 to 27. Verse 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Verse 13, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own loss and enticed. 15 says, Then when loss had conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death. 16 says, Do not err, my beloved brethren. 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no verbalness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will beget he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Verse 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. 23. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. 24. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. Verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth, his own heart, this man's religion is vain. 27 and last, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks this morning for His Holy Word and we pray that as we read the Word of God each day that we will allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts to mold us after the image of God so that we can in this world reflect His character. Amen. To God be the glory. Now the word of God says that we are blessed when we endure temptation. Because when we are tried, when we go through our crucibles, and when we endure our temptation, at the end of that victory, we will receive a crown of life. And so he has promised us that when we complete the race of life, when all our work on earth is done, that he will welcome us home with that crown, with that new name. It also tells us that when we are tempted, 
we should not think that it is God that is tempting us. Because remember that God is righteous. God don't do that. I have, I have heard the saying before that God is tempting me or tempting somebody. Or a person might say that God is tempting them. I've heard person refer to, to that or something close to that before. And here the word of God is telling us that God do not do that. That is the devil's work. The devil is the one that tempts you. And as scriptures say, why are we tempted oftentimes? We are tempted most of the time we fall into temptation because we are drawn away our own loss draw us into those predicaments and so because we are drawn away the devil have an opportunity now where he can tempt us and so that is why we must always make sure that we stay under the protection of God we need to stay in the harm of Jesus so do not be deceived God don't tempt anybody the devil does that. And it also says that, it continues to say that every good gift come from above. So if every good gift come from above, it cannot be that God is tempting us. Is, tem is temptation something good? When somebody tempts you, is that a good feeling? No, it is not. So it cannot come from God. Amen? God only give those things which are good. He said in his word that what? The thoughts that he has towards us are good to prosper us, to bless us. He only has good thoughts towards us. And one of the best thoughts and intention and will that he has for our life is for us to be saved. And I say amen to that. He continued to say that we must learn to be swift to hear. And slow to speak. Now I know sometimes you know we we speak more than we listen. And because we speak more than we listen, oftentimes we miss important messages that we need to hear. Uh, somebody might be saying something to us, and because we are competing with the person, we miss whatever the person is saying, and then we leave with a miss message, or we leave with a wrong understanding of what the person is trying to say to us. And then it leads to something else often time. Now we have to be careful of that. Pre people in the olden days will say that is why you get two ears and one mouth. So you listen more and you speak less. Right? The word of God say that we need to we need to bridle our tongue. We need to put away all the things from us that are offensive to God that are displeasing in the sight of God, right? And we need to engraft ourselves in the Word of God because the Word of God is what will transform us into the image of God because it points us to God and it shows us those things in our lives that we need to get rid of. Amen? And so that is what we need to pay attention to. So, when we hear the word of God, we need to put the word of God in practice. Because when we don't do that, we're only deceiving ourselves. And then we fall into the, in the category of hypocrisy or hypocrites. And nobody wants to be called that ugly word. True? And so, let us learn to practice what we preach. You know, sometimes we will fall, yes. But we must get back up again because remember, we are not representing ourselves and we have to be careful of the message that we send out there into the world. Amen. It continued to tell us that if we are hearers of the word and not doers of the word, it is almost like you going to the mirror to fix your tie and then forget that is your tie you go to fix and you walk away. And didn't fix the tie. But you had all intention to fix the tie. Because what? Either somebody told you that the tie needed to be fixed. Or you realized that the tie needed to be fixed. But you didn't fix it. So in the same way. If you hear the word of God. And you don't make it practical in your life. It doesn't help you. 
you, you see what I'm going? You see where I'm going with this? So whatever you hear, you're supposed to put it in practice. Whatever you read, whatever you study, we should make it become a part of our lives. Now it says also that if a man, if someone claim to be religious or claim to be a Christian, but is not practicing Christianity, then is deceiving his own self. Now, what does being a Christian entail? So, according to the standard of God, you need to figure out what is that? What being a Christian means? Or when you find out what it means, then you need to practice that. You can't say you're a Christian and then you fail to practice the principles of Christianity. And it goes on and it gives a little example of what being a Christian is all about. It talks about visiting the fatherless, the widows, those who are afflicted, those who are afflicted, those who are suffering, those who are in need, those who need comfort, whatever the situation may be. We need to reach out to these people and we need to share with them the love of God while we try to meet the needs that they may have. And so it's a complete package. So Christianity is unselfish love in practice. Amen. And so as we consider the word of God this morning and as we think about what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to us, may we work the work that we have been given and may we humble ourselves may we be faithful may we continue to run this race as we look for the coming of our lord jesus christ because he says that when he comes he will give each person according to the deeds that they have done so if you want to be saved in the kingdom of god if you want to receive a crown of life you know what you got to do you have got to be faithful. You have to finish the race faithfully. That's the only way. We can't do this in our own strength. It has to be in His strength. So let us continue to seek His face. Let us continue to trust Him. Because one of these days, He will return to take us home. May God continue to bless you and keep you as we continue into the Sabbath. Amen.